The next step is pulling up. Pulling up's the practice step. This is when pots will collapse and give their lives to teach you something about how to make a pot on the wheel. When you're pulling up, you want to have your hands in an, what I call a little duck position. All your fingers are together. If you want to, you can grab the sponge at this time so that your hands will stay wet all the way up. On the outside, you'll make this little pressure point push on the bottom of your pot. You'll go to the wheel head, to the bottom of the pot, and then you'll start pulling up. The interior hand, which is now your left hand, is just fingertips at the bottom of the pot. This will naturally pull your inside hand a little higher than your outside because it's resting on the clay in the bottom of your pot. This is a perfect and natural position for pulling up. I'm going to create just a little bit of pressure on the outside hand, tucking my elbows in, and I'm going to pull straight up the walls of the pot. The reason why I call it the practice step is because you have to practice your pressure. You don't want to push too hard. Of course, you don't want to be too light with your pressure or you won't have anything happen on your pot. I always tell my students it's kind of like a handshake. Firm, but not too firm. So here we go. I'm going to put a little water on the walls of my pot. I'm taking my sponge on the outside. I'm pushing in. My inside hand is resting right on the top of my outside hand. And I'm going to slowly pull the pot up. A couple of things about pulling up. If you pull up too quickly, you'll have a thin spot at the bottom and the top of your pot will be heavy and it will rip. Also, if I pull too quickly up, I call that making a barbershop pull. I've not kept in my mind that I have to wait for the pot to go in full revolution before I can go to the next step. So when I'm pulling up, I'm pulling up slowly, keeping in my mind that the pot needs to go a full revolution. Notice as my pot got taller, I was unable to connect my hands, but as I get to the middle of my pot, I reach my left hand out to rest it on my right hand. Elbows always tucked in, hands always trying to touch each other. On the inside, I do not use the whole flat of my fingers. That will cause uneven pressure on the wall of your pot. It's always little pressure points. If your pot starts twisting and warping, it's usually because you're using the whole flat of the sponge or the whole flat of these fingers. After pulling up, it's time for shaping. I've got a little water in the bottom of my pot, so I'm going to keep that dry. And when it's time for shaping, I have it divided up into two methods. One which is called collaring. With collaring, use your whole hands and you can collar a little bit of a neck. That's why it's called collaring. The other shaping technique is called the dance. That's what I call it. But we have an equal opportunity couple because what we're going to do is we're going to do the same position as pulling up, but when I want it to swell out, my inside hand is going to lead and it's going to swell the pot out. When my outside hand wants to lead so the pot will go in, it will start pushing. Each hand pushing the pressure, shaping the pot, the other hand supporting it. Just like a couple dancing up the side of your pot. So again, I'm going to make a little duck with a sponge, little fingers on the inside, and if I want the pot to swell out, my inside hand is leading. When I want it to swell in, my outside hand is leading. If I want it to swell out again, my inside hand leads. This is called the dance. Now when you're shaping, you want to shape into the walls of your pot are about a quarter to a half inch thick. Beginner pots are usually thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. It's very important that you work on consistent thickness all the way from the bottom to the top. Again, that's going to be a lot easier if you keep your elbows tucked in, working just with pressure points, connecting your hands whenever you can. After you shape your pot, it's time for the final look. This is what's going to take you from a beginner potter to an intermediate potter immediately. The first thing we want to do is make sure there's no water in the bottom. We also want to wipe the outside of our pot to make sure that there's no water collecting on the walls. The most important thing you can do for your pot is to check the rim. A lot of beginner pots have a very sharp, thin rim. And after it's fired in the kiln, it looks dangerous and it's not appealing. You want your rim to be nice and round. A little bit of pressure with a sponge or with a finger will make that nice and thick and rounded. 
Let's say as you pulled up, one side raised up a little higher than the other. It's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of times when you first learn to center and open, you're not opening evenly. And so you have one wall that's a little thicker than the other side. And as you pull up, if your pull is good and consistent, you'll work that unevenness up to the top. And you'll have a higher rise on one side of your pot than the other. Now you can pull that into a spout or you can do the next step. Let's suppose that my rim was uneven and it was time to pull it off. Use the needle tool. Again, resting your fingers, one on either side of the pot, Take your needle tool, rest it on your thumb, and what we're going to do is slowly, as the pot turns, cut in the clay to pull the rim off. And that gives me a nice, even rim again to soften with my sponge. So the final look is important. Also, if you're looking at your pots and they just seem to be the same over and over and over again, what I tell my students is, well, exaggerate what's already there. Maybe you're playing it too safe. What if I just swelled this out a little bit more? What if I collared this in just a little bit more? What if I pulled this out just a little bit more? And that exaggerates what's already there. Now this also be a time when you get out of your safety zone and you push yourself a little bit. This is when your pots will start collapsing. But that's okay, because they gave their life to teach you how to make the next pot better. The next step is trimming the excess. I have a lot of clay down here and I want to get it off. I'm going to teach you trimming for after your pot is leather hard and you can trim it off with the trim tools. But we can get a lot of that business done right now. This is when I use the knife tool. The knife tool has a nice pointed end. I hold it like a pencil with my pointy finger holding the tool. I'm going to take this tool, I'm going to look at the edge of my pot, and I'm going to tuck my elbows in. I'm going to find where my pot starts disappearing into the clay, and I'm going to take my knife tool, and I'm going to slowly cut in, following the shape of my pot, all the way to the wheel head. Pull this tool out. Then it's time to take my needle tool, separate that ring of clay off the wheel head. I can pull this off and look at all that extra clay that I got off that now I don't have to trim. And actually, if you don't want to trim, if you do this step effectively, all you have to do is soften the bottom with the sponge and trimming's not necessary. We can also use this wooden rib tool to clean it up even more. I can make sure that where I trimmed, my pot is still a nice shape and that's trimming the excess. Now it's time to pull the pot off the wheel. Take your wire tool, and this is the right way of doing it. You're wrapping the wire around the handle to make it short enough to fit your wheel head. So, this is the way we do it. We wrap the wire around our fingers. Put your thumbs on top of the wire, and we're gonna slide the wire underneath the pot. You want to make sure your thumbs are on top of the wire because if I do this and pull, you can tell I would be slicing some of my pot. So thumbs on top. I do this step with the wheel still, not rotating. I'm going to run the wire underneath the pot, put this in here, and now it's time for the pot lifts. A lot of potters can just pull their pot right off the wheel head. After over 20 years, I still have not mastered that without warping the pot. So I use pot lifts. Now a lot of potters also use bats. I only use bats when I'm making plates or large pieces, and we'll talk more about that in the advanced techniques. But here we've got our pot lifts. We're going to get them wet. We slide them underneath the pot, but it doesn't have to go all the way under, just underneath the rim about a half inch. And then we're going to tilt the pot towards us, because if I try to lift straight up, the suction of the clay will not allow the pot to release. So I tilt it toward me, and then I can set this on a bat or a board or a table. What I use are paper plates. A couple paper plates are great bats. They're very inexpensive. You can throw them away. Another advantage to setting your pot on a paper plate is as your pot dries, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, if it's on paper, it, the paper will release the pot and let it pull in a little bit. So I use paper plates. Of course, you can use the large paper plates or the smaller paper plates. I'll use the large paper plate for this pot. I'm going to lift it up, set it on the paper plate, and then to release the pot lifts, I again pull them out. A lot of times people put their pot lifts under their pot and when they're pulling them out, they try to shake it out, but your clay pot is stuck right here on this part of the pot lift, so we slide them out like this. Now our pot is complete. 
If you're going to trim it at the leather hard stage, you'll either want to keep an eye on it because it'll dry pretty quickly and probably be ready to trim even later that day or the next day, or cover it with plastic, tuck the plastic under, and then your pot will last probably seven to ten days before it's time to trim. If you have done trim the excess effectively, you don't even need to trim, and you can just go ahead and let it dry, wipe the bottom with a sponge before you do your firing. So there we go, making a pot with the clay lady.